Welcome to Beasley Finds Local Edition. In today's video we will be checking out Stony Kill Falls. And I'll explain why I believe these are the best the Lower Hudson Valley has to offer. I grew up in this area and spent a lot of time here and now I'm trying to grow this channel to share some stuff I hope you folks find interesting. So please give this video a like and support a struggling YouTuber. Thanks! If you are coming from east of the ridge you will pass the hairpin turn where geology professors from local universities stop to show students the contact between hard and soft rock at this location. The best way to find the trailhead is to set your GPS to Stony Kill Falls, Shaft 2A Road, Carhonks in New York. Look in the description below for the address. And use the time codes if you want to jump to different chapters in this video. Regardless of your starting location, you will find your way onto Route 4455, which is the main road crossing the Schwanagunk Mountains. I mentioned the geology of the area because it explains why we just drove through a valley and are now up on a ridge. Over geologic time, the soft rock to the east eroded to become a valley, while the hard rock here formed a ridge. And this ridge is a really popular rock climbing destination. Not to mention all the hiking, biking, and swimming that goes on here. You will pass Minnewaska State Park if you are up from the city and coming from east of the ridge. Minnewaska State Park is full of things to do as well, but that's a video for another day. Instead, I'll give you a little background on the falls and how Shaft 2A Road got its name. As we pass by the Rondout Valley, you should know that a very long tunnel called the Rondout West Branch Tunnel passes beneath the ridge and contributes about 50% of New York City's drinking water to the aqueduct. At one point, the Rondout Tunnel was leaking millions of gallons of water per day and was just one of many problems with New York City's aqueduct that needed to be addressed. And the work continues. Anyhow, Shaft 2A is one of several maintenance shafts that were drilled to overhaul and maintain the New York City aqueduct system. For some reason, they put a helicopter pad here. I'm not sure what that was for, but if someone listening does know, Please share the answer with us in the comments section below. Thanks. This is Shaft 2A Road, and now you know how it got its name. Back in the day, this gate used to be closed, and cars would pile up in front of it on weekends. But the parking situation is much better now. You have a very spacious parking lot right next to the trailhead, and you don't have to walk half a mile to get in. Our first destination will be the Lower Falls. It partly freezes in the winter, and it's very beautiful. One of the first signs reminds us not to ice climb here, as if the thought ever crossed my mind. Although, perhaps I'll come back in the winter to make another video of the frozen falls, if I get some requests in the comments section below. The signs at the trailhead are pretty useful and give us some ideas about what to do and what not to do. The All Trails page calls this an easy hike, and it is to the lower falls, but I would call it moderate if you plan to go above the falls like we do in this video. I recommend hiking with a buddy and always letting someone know where you're going and when you plan to return. I am guilty of forgetting to do these things at times, but don't be like me. Not that I would call this trail dangerous, in fact it was greatly improved in 2016 and 17. I can't remember exactly when I started coming up here, but I think my brother found this place first, and I started checking it out when I came home on leave from the military. After finishing my tour in the Navy in 2007, I came up here at least once every summer and still do. Me and my buddies are guilty of scrambling up the side of the lower falls to reach the upper falls before the trail improvements. But now there's a beautiful stone line switchback that provides access to the upper falls. You can find articles about the Stony Kill Trail Improvement Project and read about the 3,000 volunteer hours that contributed to making this a more sustainable visitor attraction. Although these falls aren't a local secret anymore, the area is still quiet and peaceful on weekdays, and most people that I have encountered here are very respectful and stay on the trail. Nowadays, I stay on the straight and narrow as well. We are approaching the lower falls, so take a moment to appreciate the view. Also, if you want, I can come back in the winter when it freezes over to make another video. Just let me know in the comments section below. If you are getting some value from this video, Please take a moment to hit the like button below to support the channel. YouTube won't share my content unless it gets some likes. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel for more great content. Thank you. As you ascend this excellent stone line switchback, watch out for occasional mountain poodles and fellow hikers. This steep and narrow section of trail isn't really wide enough for two adults. And please use proper footwear when hiking up. 
A buddy of mine split his big toenail because he was wearing sandals. I told him it was an easy hike, but I never said wear sandals, so I am just putting it out there. I came here in early spring to film this video so that you could see the lay of the land without the leaves obscuring the contours. People used to scramble up this section of trail, but the trail improvement project included the installation of these awesome steps carved from the Schwanagunk Quartz Conglomerate, an extremely hard rock that will last forever. Anyhow, take your time getting up the switchback here that leads to the upper falls. There is one spot where you will have to climb a short ladder, nothing too difficult, and they place the safety railing here as well. Speaking of safety, you may want to use a little insect repellent when hiking in these parts. Orange, Ulster, and Sullivan counties have a high incidence of ticks that carry Lyme's disease. But I don't recall picking up any ticks from this particular spot, so I wouldn't be too worried. After getting to the top, pay attention and follow the trail markers on the trees. Try to stay to the right if the trail seems to wander. In other words, don't go up in elevation just yet. And if you come up here in winter or very early spring, keep an eye out for animals that might be in the caves. The little rock overhangs up here look like a nice spot for animals to shelter in. I wouldn't expect to see anything in the late spring or summer months though. Not that I've ever seen any animals of concern in this area, mostly just birds, squirrels, and people's dogs. Speaking of dogs, if you bring yours, please use a leash for everyone's safety, including your pet's safety. Note that I took the wrong way here on purpose, up to the left, to show you how it looks if you get off trail on accident. Notice that we are a bit above the trail to the south, but just keep heading west. Have a look around and start to make your way down in elevation a bit, and you will run back into the trail leading to the upper falls. This is a common mistake, but just follow the sound of the water to the west and you can't go wrong. You are about to be in for a nice surprise. If you have kids along for the hike or just irresponsible adults, now might be a good time to have a safety talk with them before experiencing the upper falls. The upper section is immediately adjacent to the ledge that forms the lower falls. In other words, the edge of a big cliff. If you are going to have a look below, please use extreme caution. People have died here, unfortunately. And shifting back to the positive. The upper falls here is why I think these are the best that the Hudson Valley has to offer. You are really getting a two for one deal at Stony Kill, and there is even more above these falls to check out. The water flow at Stony Kill is extremely variable and dependent on precipitation. The flow can be a little fast after heavy rains, so you might want to wait a day or two after a big rain event for things to calm down. Don't be afraid to go down to the falls. I definitely think you should wait in to let some water cool you off on a hot day. The eons of geologic stress have created stair-like steps in the fabric of the rocks here, and these steps create a myriad of tiny waterfalls. Each one contributes to the upper falls here like the culmination of a big fractal pattern. It's really cool if you think about it, and clearly I have completely nerded out. Moving on. If you aren't sure about going near the edge or get vertigo like my wife, it's best just to stay away from the cliff edge. In the past my buddy and I have sat on the edge with our legs dangling off, but I have wondered if some of that geologic stress combined with our considerable weight was going to break off a chunk of the ledge with me on it. So I don't really sit on the edge anymore these days. It's really peaceful here, and if you're limited on time, you can just spend the rest of it here taking pictures or whatever you like. The next section of the video is a scenic walk up above the falls where there are wading pools, hanging gardens, and tons of interesting nooks and crannies to explore. Oh, there's that mountain poodle again. To access the area above the falls, I recommend taking the stream channel. It's a really nice way to explore this little hike. It's a good idea to keep track of time as you move up the stream. You can easily get distracted with all the little water features, rocks, and plants to see along the way. Be sure to leave plenty of time for the return trip. You could actually walk the stream bed for a mile or more before it gets a bit too thick with shrubs and trees to make for a pleasant hike. A guy once told me he hiked all the way back to a little lake where the stream begins. Let me know in the comments section if any listeners have done this. I'd really appreciate it. So, hopefully you've decided to stick around for the last section of this video. And I hope it motivates you to explore a little further when you get here in person. Like I said before, some water shoes are your best bet. Something with a little bit of traction would 
be helpful too. The black moss covered rocks are the most slippery, so watch out for those. Cell service is spotty up here, so if someone slips and takes a fall, you may have to get back to the upper falls area to make a call for help. Heading up the stream bed is my favorite way to go, but there's a footpath that parallels the stream channel if the water is a bit too fast in spots. I really don't expect that would be an issue unless it just rained really hard. It's a nice flat walk most of the way, with areas of shade, but plenty of opportunities for sunbathing and wading into the stream along the way. The glacial activity and erosion of the last ice age carved out some nice little pockets and pools where you can swim. If you come up here in mid-June, you will also get a chance to see the beautiful mountain laurel in bloom. The flowers are white and pink blossoms that look really attractive against the deep green leaves and they make for a nice photo backdrop. Here's a picture. The pools of water are usually at their best a couple days after a good rain. One of the first pools you will run into is called the nudist pool. So you have to understand that the town at the base of the mountain to the east is a very artsy, hippie kind of college town, and some of the residents feel more comfortable in their birthday suits. On several occasions, I have run into people sunbathing in the nude or close enough. Anyhow, most of these naturalists are pretty good about covering up when people walk by, but I just wanted to give you all a heads up. If you are keeping track of the time, it might be a good idea to start thinking about heading back, but make sure to soak in the views on the way. I love the little hanging gardens on the rock ledges with water dripping off the sides. They make for some interesting photos as well. Watch your footing on the way back, this is when people tend to get complacent about safety. Also, please don't stack rocks here as you may incur the wrath of the local geology professors. Some of them are very sensitive about leaving rocks where they lie. And I tend to agree that we should leave this place exactly as we find it, so that other folks can enjoy it as well. Every time I come up here it feels a little different. Partly due to the amount of precipitation, and depending on the time of the year, the sunlight illuminates the water, rocks, and trees to make for a unique experience each day. I hope this video helps you figure out how to get up here and have your own experience. Let me know how it goes. If you got to the trailhead in the morning, then you will likely have more time to hang out at the upper falls and relax a bit before heading down. And in my opinion, this is the best spot for photo opportunities. The lower falls are nice, but the lighting is better up here. Anyhow, it is time to get going. The way back should go pretty fast for you. Perhaps not this fast, but definitely easier than the way up. If you are staying in the area, I definitely recommend that you check out some of the restaurants on the way down or in the village of Newpoltz. The other side of the mountain in Kerhonkson is also an up and coming area, but still relatively undeveloped. You will find more local amenities in Rosendale to the north, Newpoltz back east, or to the south. If you subscribe to the channel, I will be making more videos of local attractions. The plan is to include some spots that you wouldn't typically find. Give me a little time though, because my wife and I are headed to Peru in a few weeks. But check out the Beasley Finds Travel playlist to see some of the places we've been to already, and hit the notification bell to get notified when more videos get posted. Thanks!